Today, I'm batch recording seven videos for my time-saving hacks for video editing series, which is gonna be coming out over the next several weeks. In this video, though, I'm focused on batching thumbnails, and I'm gonna show you how I went about batching the thumbnails for those videos. So let me show you how I did it. I'm here to help you be productive, so let's get into it. Before we do, I just came out with a new video production checklist, which I'm gonna leave a link to down in the description. Consider subscribing if you're not already, cause you know, I'm coming out with videos all the time. Now, let's get into this. How many times have you pressed record on your video and then you've gone through the entire edit process, you're about to upload it to YouTube and then you realize you forgot to take a picture for your thumbnail. Yeah, it happens to me like all the time. It's super frustrating, right? So then you scrub through all your footage looking for a halfway decent shot. Maybe there's some motion blur in there. Or you have like a half smile and it just, it's not a good image. So yeah, I'm trying to tackle that ahead of time. And the easiest way to do that really is just to be prepared. And because I'm spending so much time focusing on it, I know it's gonna get done, so I won't have to worry about it later. Maybe you should do the same thing. Now in this video, I'm using GIMP, but you can also use Photoshop or Canva. It all works the same exact way. The difference is GIMP is 100% free, Canva is mostly free, and Photoshop will cost your firstborn, your soul, and probably an arm and a leg. So if you don't wanna give those up, might as well give GIMP a try, or maybe Canva, because that one's actually easier. In any event, let's hop into that. So to prepare making all my different thumbnails, I decided to create a really quick and easy template within GIMP. Because I'm focusing on DaVinci Resolve tutorials for the next seven videos in this series at least, I put the DaVinci logo up here, and then I figured out what my text was gonna be for each of the different thumbnails. So for example, the text on here is for power bins, we have one for Fairlight, power grades, keyboard shortcuts, and etc. Once I knew what the text was gonna say, I actually ended up picking out my text. Now, I had a couple of different options. My usual go-to is Oswald, but with Oswald, it's very condensed. And so, with this, I really wanted it to stand out and really pop. What a lot of people use for a font on YouTube is actually called Babies New, Babies New, Babas New. I don't know how you pronounce it. We're gonna say Babies. So Fairbairs New, okay, is the font that I actually ended up using and that's what I settled on because it's it's a nice, very clear and clean font. Next thing that I did was I created a box around all the different text to really make it stand out, especially if I'm gonna be taking pictures and have a background and stuff. I want it to be able to stand out because I could have white elements in the background, which means that my text is going to disappear or maybe there's not gonna be a strong contrast. I wanted to make sure that that contrast was gonna be there. So the next thing that I actually did was I'm padding on this box to make sure that it wasn't hugging the text. That was really key because if it is hugging the text, it's gonna be harder to see. It's not gonna stand out as well. And it's just gonna look sloppy, really. And I decided that I wanted the box to actually pop a little bit more. So what I ended up doing was adding on a drop shadow. So for example, if I select this box right here and I go to filters and light and shadow and then drop it down to drop shadow, I just use the default settings and hit okay. And bam, there you go. Pretty straightforward at least. So I did this for every single one of my planned thumbnails and for each of the different videos that I came out with. As I said before, I have several of them just listed right here. The cool thing is now that I have this, I can apply this to whatever pictures that I decide to take and that I decide to use and I'm gonna have an instant thumbnail. So super excited about this because this did not take long at all. It was super streamlined. Now that I have my template set up with the text and everything, now I can apply this towards any photo that I choose to use and it's gonna look good. So, you know, that's the goal. So then it was time for the photo shoot. Being productive and saving time are things that get me super excited and super pumped because I mean, let's face it, you have more time to focus on other things. That energy is something that I wanted to convey and I wanted to create that connection, of course. You know, the important thing is just to have a lot of fun with it because as long as you're having fun, then it's gonna show. If you're not having fun, it's gonna show. People don't wanna be around people who don't like to have fun. At least, I don't think so. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen anybody for a while. So to do all my photos, I actually ended up using my phone because it's a lot more vivid and doing quick edits on the phone just 
is a lot easier than trying to do it on the computer. It's just, it's less of a headache and I can go through it a lot more quickly. For that, I actually ended up using Snapseed because you can get it on Apple, you can get it on Android, so you might as well use it. Snapseed is made by Google. It's completely free. You can make really quick adjustments just by tapping some of the options on there. And the coolest part about that is the last edit feature. So every time you open a new photo, you can tap last edit and it's gonna apply whatever adjustments were made to the last photo to that photo. The only difference is it's not gonna do cropping and it's not gonna do rotation. Literally to edit every single one of those pictures took like 10 seconds each, which isn't bad. Once I was done editing those photos in Snapseed, I added them to OneDrive and then downloaded them onto the computer and opened them up in GIMP. Now, once I had my pictures in GIMP, I went through each of them to see which one matched up the best with the text, what conveyed the message that I was trying to get across, and of course, making sure that I was super excited because if I wasn't excited, then, you know, I didn't want it on there. Kind of makes sense, right? Now, once I had the photo for each thumbnail, I ended up scaling them down. And of course, I polished them up a bit to make sure that my hair wasn't all frazzly because, you know, the pandemic had some consequences of not getting a haircut. Once I was done with that, I exported the photos to the corresponding folders for the videos and I uploaded them to Trello. And at that point, I was good to go. So just some tips for you on this. Overall, the process wasn't super complicated. The important thing is making sure that you have a system set up so that way the process goes a lot more smoothly. I gave myself plenty of options. With this, I took like 60 photos because there's nothing worse than taking like one or two photos and not liking the photo. Then you're kind of stuck with those photos. It's kind of like baby pictures. Yeah, you didn't really have much control over those, did you? But, you know, still, having fun is super important because if you're not having fun, people don't want to be around somebody who's not having fun. I don't want to be around somebody who's not having fun. That's not fun. And that's all about the fun. If you are going to be appearing in your videos, you should be on the thumbnail. I mean, why not, right? People like people, people like to create a connection. So you might as well put it on there. So I wanna know, how do you create thumbnails? Smash that like button if you got value out of this. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Of course, ring the bell so you get notified when I come out with those videos. And until next time, I'll catch you later.